I often wonder what goes on in your minds on the Sundays that I opt for the short form. You know, I often wonder that. Someday you'll have to share those thoughts with me. Um, we're very familiar with this particular gospel. It's a beautiful gospel. And if you, you read it very quickly, you can just kind of say what a nice little story and um, perhaps lose some of the meaning. There's many uh, scripture scholars have, have spent a lot of time discussing this particular passage. And it's almost a passage that you got to read in between the lines a little and uh, try to determine all that's going on. When we look at this particular gospel, it's very important to see the details. Uh, detail one, the field is fertile. We know that. The field is fertile. Detail number two, the seed is good seed. The seed that was used was good. Third, the, the owner, the lord of the field, scattered the seed presumably at the correct time and in the correct way. We, we kind of interpret that. It was done correctly. And uh, we also see that there are watchmen put in place over the field. Part of their job was to protect the field and the seed. And so the, the question becomes, you know, how did these weeds get planted by the enemy? And you kind of look in between the lines and you have to, I suppose, think that the uh, watchmen did not do their job right. Either they were not very careful, they fell asleep, uh, they uh, failed to respond, and uh, somehow allowed this enemy to come and uh, sow bad seed, the weeds. What about this weed? The, the weed that we hear about is probably what they would have called darnel or cockle. It's a, a weed that looked similar to wheat. And uh, a weed that was actually slightly poisonous in nature. And uh, if that was ground up with the wheat and used, it would have minimally created a good case of nausea for the person eating it. There was uh, a poisonous dimension to it. And it was a common problem in Jesus' time that, that um, if there was a personal vendetta or vengeance that uh, an enemy might come and, and in your field uh, sow these seeds of this weed. And it was uh, so prevalent of a problem that Roman law even covered a prescription for the penalty that would go with such of a crime. Well, what does all that have to do with us? I don't see a lot of wheat growing uh, in uh, Williamsville and Amherst. So what does that mean for us? Well, really, it's a, a message for all of us as Christians, as disciples of Christ, to, to be on guard. It's really what it's a message, of, to be, be sure that the good things which God has given to us continue to remain and grow. It's the first message, and kind of the flip side of that, that we're not to fall asleep. We're to not allow an enemy to have a chance to plant bad seeds that would somehow choke off the word, the life of God. So simply stated for us today, simple question, are you on guard? And, or I should say, not and, have you fallen asleep? Have we grown sluggish in some way in, in our heart? It's an important question to answer. I remember a, a legendary Archbishop of Ottawa, Canada, I don't recall his name, but he was legendary that when you, you met him, if you were a close friend, uh, uh, if you were a member of the diocese or someone he's never met before, did not matter. Whenever this Archbishop came up to you and greeted you, he would shake your hand very firmly, almost squeezing it. And he was legendary to say to everyone he shook hands with, the church is still strong. Visible sign in the firmness of his handshake and 
the words, you know, the church is still strong. Well, the church is still strong. And uh, the field of the church today is still fertile. And uh, the seed is still good. And uh, the Lord who has planted those seeds has done so correctly. And uh, you, myself, we, we are the watchmen. We are the ones to uh, give protection to that word, that seed in the world today. So are we on guard? Have we fallen asleep? Have we grown sluggish in some way? Culture can sometimes be that weed that grows up alongside the wheat, the word of God, and very much unknown to us as it's happening, choke off the word of God. We, we need to be on guard because at times the, the enemy today, some within culture try to, to plant that darnell, that poisonous weed, which will gravely affect eternal life. I often refer to our culture at times as a, a tsunami of secularism. It's the weed that we need to watch for. Because our, our culture very often today has basically abandoned a universal moral truth. Subscribe to other ways of thinking that grow up alongside with the universal truth of the scripture. The scripture being the, the wheat, the other systems of thought, certainly choking it off as weed. The, the culture has uh, basically uh, eliminated the respect for human life, considers a, a human right to have a abortion, a human right to end one's own life by way of uh, euthanasia or physician-assisted suicide. The, the culture basically has subscribed to a relativism, a different way of thinking, and Culture basically has accepted a narcissism, a consumerism, and uh, really an obsession over very trivial things that take up an awful lot of our time and energy. I really do not need texted to me or on Snapchat a photograph of someone's latte that they are drinking at Starbucks. But nonetheless, we spend an uncalculable amount of time over so many of these trivial things that often choke off the more important elements of our lives. Con culture today very often has taken what was an interior life reserved for God and turned it to be a very self-centered interior life, choking off the presence of God in mind, heart, and soul. And this, this poisonous wheat often is made to look like it has great sense to it. Very often when taken at the surface, we're, we're told it's about equality. We're, we're told it's about an issue of human rights or perhaps a legal matter, no longer a religious one. We're, we're told it's a, a matter of personal choice in life. We can all make those personal choices. And at the surface, it, it seems to make an awful lot of sense as it grows up along the universal truth of the gospel. But we see that sometimes faith gets choked off because of it. Today I'd just like to suggest to you a few thoughts as we ponder this very brief gospel, really questions as we see the seed of the word of God taking root in us as we acknowledge weed in our particular culture today that still grows alongside. You know, we've all heard the word of God. But do we really believe the word of God? It's two very different questions. We've heard the word, but do we believe the word? Similarly, we all would state we believe in God, but do we actually believe God? It's a separate question. We believe in him, but we believe that word planted as seed within us. All of us have really been catechized. We, we've learned right from wrong. But as we've been catechized, have we truly been evangelized to see that we have to be 
in an intimate love relationship with Christ in order to take that catechesis, that knowledge, and bring it to life as we live for the one who laid his life down for us. We can do great work and great ministry, and there's many people who do great service, but do we do that as a natural outflow from the love of God? Remember the, the two great laws, love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul, love your neighbor as yourself. And so service is the secondary thing which flows only after the deep-rooted love of God has taken deep root within us. So today, simple question, are we awake or asleep? And uh, what is the great work that we're about? Do we see the tsunami of secularism that could very often choke off the uh, word of the seeds planted by God in the world today? Are we willing to transform that tsunami of secularism once again to a tsunami of the Holy Spirit.